Good morning, everybody. So we'll get going to try to keep on agenda. I think people will gradually start to fill in. My name is Jeff McKay. I'm President and CEO of Organogenesis, as well as Chairman of the Alliance of Regenerative Medicine. And I'd like to welcome you to the second Investor Day. And uh, as the field grows, the Investor Day grows. So we, uh, we look forward to a, a very successful day. And thank you for your attendance. Uh, it is put on by ARM, the Alliance of Regenerative Medicine which is over 150 stakeholders that are all dedicated to advancing the field of regenerative medicine. And importantly, it's more than just an industry group. It's a group of industry, but also of patient advocates, of academics, of translational centers that are all committed to advancing this field uh, towards getting it to the patients. So uh, thank you, Arm, for putting this on. Uh, we talk about regenerative medicine, but not everybody is always clear on what, what it is that, that it means. And we have a very big tent, broad definition of regenerative medicine. At the heart of it, we mean living cells, but it could be cells that are delivered to the body to induce or to stimulate tissue to regenerate. It could be gene-modified cells. It could be immuno-modified cells, or it could be uh, targeting via large or small proteins exogenous cellular activity. So ve very broad definition, uh, but importantly, we're standing here in 2014 with the field really having achieved uh, a very important number of milestones in terms of validation. And uh, we're, what you will have presented to you today is a very strong cohort of companies that have very well-managed technologies and very strong management teams and uh, I, I would reference a, a recent McKinsey study that said five years ago, the cell and gene therapy market had 429 projects in clinical development, and today they have 575. So we are reaching a material level of clinical activity. Now, of that 575, about half of them are in preclinical, so very early stage, but 174 are in phase two clinical trials and 24 are in phase three clinical trials. And so if you look at the history of products that have navigated through the entire FDA pathway, I think what we believe and what we can back up is that not all of these therapies will make it to market and not everything that you're gonna to see today is gonna to make it to market, but that the attrition rates are trending to be in line or better than typical pharma and device clinical attrition rates. And so if you accept that uh, a very important subset of these technologies that are in mid to late trials are actually going to make it, and there's 24 in phase three clinical and 174 in phase two. What we're seeing is a really transformation of healthcare. And so it's, it's a very, very exciting point in time. If you ask where are these being applied, what therapeutic areas, the simple answer is head to toe, inside and out, but important areas like cancer, musculoskeletal, cardiovascular, ocular, very, very large, important, expensive, unmet medical needs where typical drugs and devices are not adequately doing the job are being targeted by regenerative medicine therapies. The revenues of the commercialized pro products are growing. Uh, in 2010, the revenue of the commercialized products were $460 million. In 2013, $1.3 billion. So nice, strong growth from the, uh, the uh, original pioneers. And then often we're asked, wh where, where does pharma stand? Where, where do the big multinationals stand? And uh, we will be releasing today a, a what we call, within the Alliance of Regenerative Medicine, the pharma survey that we've conducted. And it's not out licensing you know, a small study, a market research study to, to contact low-level pharmaceutical executives. It's senior people within the alliance, senior scientists within the alliance, liaising with top scientists in essentially the universe of tier one pharma companies to really quantify once and for all what is their activity, what is their commitment, what are they doing in regenerative medicine today, and what are their intentions. And uh, I, I won't go through all of the surveys, but I think the top line is that 100% of pharma companies are involved, investing, committed to regenerative medicine today in some way, shape, or form. And it, it's very diverse depending on the company. It ranges from drug discovery, allogeneic uh, approaches, autologous approaches, gene therapy approaches. But the main thing is that the activity level, the interest, and the commitment is there. 
And for someone like myself who has been involved in this field for over 15 years, can say that certainly wasn't the case five years ago. So by really any metric you look at, whether it's revenue, whether it's clinical activity, or whether it's the investment from some of the large strategics, we're seeing a very important shift in the market. Uh, so it's exciting, and thank you all for attending. I'll, I'll begin the day by passing it to Bob Preddy, who's president and CSO of Progenitor Cell, Ther Cell Therapy, to uh, get the program going.